Yo, objects having properties based off of their shape and material, it sounds really simple. It goes deep as a concept, man. The example I was using is if you think of a quarter and you're just thinking of it as money, then, you know, what can I do with this? Go to the vending machine or get something to eat. If we think of it as an object with properties inherent to its shape and material, then you might find yourself doing some of the things we classically see people do with quarters. Like roll it through your fingers, take a coin toss, heads or tails. Um, in fact, as we look around, we really see that humans kind of take advantage of the properties that objects have inherent to their shape and material. Thinking of kind of materials that are conductive, hydrophilic, hydrophobic, and the way that humans have discovered to arrange them to take advantage of the properties inherent to the shape and material. The shape, for example, of the dirt is important to how the plants grow. And the material is in the dirt, too. Sometimes the word takes away from the thing itself. Like we're talking about, it is just a symbol at the end of the day. If we say dirt, it doesn't say anything about the mycelium connecting every square inch of it from here across the country. It might not matter as much. Nuances like if the minerals are stripped out of the soil. To take it one step further, if we just think about it as food, then it doesn't say a lot about the properties inherent to each particular material, food items. If we just consider them as the properties inherent to their shape and material, as in the structure of the plant, animal, or whatever the, the concoction is, if we think about it as in the properties inherent to the shape and material of what we're eating, then we shrink down to the microbiome and consider the structure that exists within our gut itself and the properties inherent to that shape and the materials that it consists of, which are going to impact into that piezoelectric signal that's always occurring within the body. Again, internal forces of compression as occurring in digestion, heavily feeding back into that mechanotransduction. So then it's interesting opportunities that come from thinking of what are the properties inherent to the shape and material of this object? What is the relationship between form and function here? Uh, if we're using the geometry metaphor, being the one who spins the compass means that you determine the radius, you determine the points to connect. And so when it comes to the structure of your large intestine, you are the one who spins the compass. You're the one who's eating the food that's going to determine the structure. And you're the one who's walking around and making the movements that are creating the tensions which form the web. Interesting, those quotes like, uh, man's greatest fear is not that he's inadequate, that he's powerful beyond measure maybe defer responsibility oh it's their fault they make the vegetables too expensive oh it's it's their fault they stripped all the minerals out of the soil at the end of the day we're the scientists we're the ones spinning the compass eating the food looking at the sun working with plants animals fungi being involved in those other natural systems that feed back particular energies to us electrically consider some of the options that we have every day to start to create this structure of connective tissue intentionally building by tension where we look what kind of light are we allowing into our eyes what kind of sound are we allowing into our ears at a level further if you want to go all tai chi qigong we could ask what are the thoughts that I'm thinking? And what sort of electrical currents do those generate? The 
food that I'm eating and the mechanical pressures it produces in my gut. Playing off polarity, pressure and piezoelectricity, 